Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, we are exploring what happened over break, man. Hey, Rhett, what happened over break? I don't know. We haven't talked about it because we want to talk about it on Ear Biscuits, man. I'm going to tell you what happened over my break. This is my 2019 voice, man. Yeah, we're. We... 2019, reg- I'm regressing. Post break. <laughs> it's, it's, it's syrupy and southern er than normal. Yeah, man, because 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 we, we did that thing where we we bit we've been back, we've been doing a little work, we've been doing some stuff, but we've been holding back our full reports. It's like when you held it in at Camp Caraway for a week, right? Or every day at school. I mean, oh, you never took a dump at school. I I can probably with ninety eight percent confidence say never. But for all of. <laughs> What? For all of my grade school, middle school, and high school, never once did a number two at school. And no, 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 I w- let me just interject for a second and say, I did not know this is what the conversation was gonna be. I'm sorry I brought it up. I don't necessarily wanna. wanna That's what I call perfect attendance. Want, but but <laughs> I will say, I didn't make a habit of it. It wasn't like uh, here at work, where I'm kind of, it's like a clock, you know? You have your tea. Oh yeah, I, I wait to you, do it here at work, because that, that gives me something to do here at work because right. I mean, what else am I gonna do, yeah, work? Yeah, but at school, because the facilities are usually semi-public, soiled in, in some form. Well, all the other kids see your sneakers and yeah. your pants no, around your ankles. You gotta have your dookie shoes. <laughs> you take your dookie shoes. Out of your, your pockets. In your ba- no, in your backpack. You take your backpack to the stall, you get your dookie shoes out, you put them down, nobody knows it's you. Well, I gotta tell Lando that. <laughs> yeah, if you had dookie shoes, you can crap as much as you want all, at school. None of my kids. Know about the dookie shoes? No, because that is not a thing, right? Uh, well, of course be. they don't know my, about it. My kids don't either, and I didn't make a practice of it. I, but I, I'd say probably at least a dozen times over my school career, I ended up having to drop a load at, at school. I mean, I'm a, I'm a person, man. I'm just a human, 2019. I am a, I am a, a professional anal retentive human. So by, I'm sorry to get graphic, but by definition, I'm good at that. You are. <laughs> Thank you, Rhett. So I have a- So we got a lot to, ca- we got a lot to unload on <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna move right on from that. So. I did a little, um, uh, and this is for real, by the way. The last time we talked about this, we were yeah. it was before the break, and we were well, we were joshing. And, and I specifically, um, I, I did want to talk to you about your wife uh, because your wife indirectly hurt me over the break, and um, I hope emotionally. And you know, okay, so. Uh, on El- I, I, I have no clue what you're talking about. I don't know exactly when things happen. I just know that this podcast will be uh, live for everyone to listen to after the L tap. After the L tap, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we talked about this, so yeah. So you, that's all. That's what I, you mentioned. It. You're talking about that photo. I saw the photo, I, and I was like asking yeah, about what's wrong with your leg. I'll give a little more context for the photo shoot later when we talk about our our respective trips. Uh, but I did have a photo shoot in Cabo San Lucas in which I was wearing uh, a watermelon outfit that we talked about on LTAT. And Link, I was a little self-conscious about it, but Link did 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 point out, what's up on with your leg? What is that stripe on your leg? I thought it was okay, your- Okay, so this past Saturday, yeah. I thought, I mean, you were standing on the beach. I just thought that your leg hairs had like formed a rivulet. Captured the wind. I thought it was like wetness formed a, a hair rivulet on your sh- right shin. It was a scar. What? It was a, it was a, it was a scab that, but if you had seen it to two or three days before that, it would have been like black scab in that, whoa, in that formation. It's your wife's fault. Here's. Well, well, from what I saw of it, it was, the rivulet or scab was, I mean, it was, it was a, a good line. eight inches. Yeah, and it was tall. A, and a little bit of an S curve. You want to know how it happened? <laughs> no, I won't tell you. You know, you know what? <laughs> I really don't. You know, know. What? you're not interested. <laughs> you're not interested. What What I'm making up in my mind is probably a lot better. Um, so, as you know, we and uh, some of our close friends decided to do Secret Santa, 
And the way that it was organized by one of our friends who took the initiative was there was some website. It's not secretsanta.com, but it's something like that. And you go and you put everybody into a hat, essentially a digital hat, and then you find out who you have to be the secret Santa for. I can't. It's, I would like to remember what it's called, but I can't. If they're a sponsor, I definitely would. I, I will say that. And I do like it because when you get when you get your assignment, then you can click on the person, and they have the option to put something that they on their wish list, something they would like. But only one person did that. Only one person in our group put what they wanted on their wish list, and it was the person that my wife got the gift. For. No, actually, my person did too, and he said, "I just want you to give," and he gave listed out some charities. He said, "I'd like for you to give oh. to charities in my name," and I'm like, "I ain't doing that." I know who that was. That's not fun. Yeah. I did give to charity, but I also gave him something that yeah. was a gift. The receipt. <laughs> I gave him the re- no. I gave him um, something else. So um, you I, got I drew Christy. your wife, and you can say Christy. Uh, I, I, I you know I just call her your wife. Yeah, I drew Christy. Don't you say my wife's name. And uh, I was actually pretty excited about having your wife as a Secret Santa receiver. But what you didn't know was she also drew your name. No, she didn't. Oh, she didn't? No. Oh, I thought she did. No, William did. Oh, I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> Never mind. So you I, drew her name, and that's all that happened. I drew her name, and I was excited about it because, as you know, and I don't know if we've really discussed this, but Christy and I have very similar tastes when it comes to food. Literally. And like, chances are, and first of all, I kind of like everything, she kind of likes everything, but things very specifically like, Olives or cheese or things that taste a little bit weird, I, we 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 tend to agree on those things, and so especially the things that her and I disagree on, and you and I disagree on those things together, you both really like passionately, right? And so I thought I'm gonna go. This is kind of a fun exercise. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna shop for her as if I'm shopping for myself, because if I get things that I would like. Uh, then that's kind of getting the things that she would like, right? And so, mm-hmm. and this was a day in which I was doing quite a bit. I'll tell you some other things I was doing that day and other gifts I was getting for people, but it was essentially like, it was like December 23rd, uh, Jesse's parents had been in town and then Jesse's uh, sister and her family were coming into town and there was a, just a couple of days before Christmas that we had to kind of take care of business. And so I, I kind of went out on my own and did a bunch of last minute shopping. This is go time. For Jesse, for, Christy, your wife, for my kids. Oh. One, one gift in particular for Shepard that I'll talk about later. A little something for me maybe. Yeah, and of course. And um, your wife being happy is your gift. And so <laughs> I. Um, but you making my wife happy is not my gift. <laughs> That's just weird. Now, I was talking to my wife, Jessie, to figure out what to get your. Don't you say her name. Your wife, Christy, and. Uh, or, or No, I was asking her a question because I was like, you know the kinds of things that I like, where should I go to get those things? Is this like a whole food situation? Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, there's this place, I think it's in Pasadena. It's got, they got like kombucha and like fermented things and I think that she'd be really into it. It turns out the place was in like Altadena, I think, I can't remember exactly where it was, uh, north of Pasadena and um, so I go and I see the. the, the Again, if they were a sponsor, you'd know. Yeah. And I see the place, I'm gonna talk a little crap about the place, so I don't wanna say the name of the place. But I see the place, and uh, it's in one of those situations where it's kind of like a little downtown area, but then there was a Rite Aid caddy corner across the street, across the corner, with a parking lot, but it said for Rite Aid customers only. And there was a guy sitting next to his car in a lawn chair and it seemed like he was like the guy that Rite Aid pays to make sure nobody violates the parking situation. Okay. I don't know why else he would be there. It was a little strange. Okay. And I don't know if he's like a shop owner of one of the other places, whatever. He had like some, like a bowl of food that he was eating on the back of the car he was sitting next to as well. So he was bound to that location. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna pull the old, uh, yeah, you know, the old, I'm a go to Rite Aid, but go, I, winky winky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't. I was trying to come up with a name for it, but the Rite Aid winky winky. Yeah. So I went into the Rite Aid and went in and. Did you talk to the bowl eater before no, no, you no, went? No, 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 no. But I, you parked there, is what you're telling I me. I parked at Rite Aid. I walked in. I did a loop 
and I came back out. Oh, with nothing. Nothing. I was gonna get something like chapstick, something you could always use, but there's a line. We have that, we yeah. make that ourselves. We make it ourselves, exactly, <laughs> why do I need that? So I come back out and then I walk through the parking lot and I uh, walk down to this other place. Turns out they did not have any of the stuff that my wife had basically indicated they might have. They they had stuff that you could get like fresh made right there, but they didn't have like, I thought they were gonna have like jars of pickled things and the stuff that I like that your wife would like, you know, I wanted to get her some like pickled okra. I did end up finding pickled asparagus at Whole Foods later, bone broth and other things, but I'm a little pissed because I didn't get anything Ooh, and I've driven, strong language. I've driven, you know, to Altadena of all places <laughs> and, um, and then I come back and you I- could've just gone to Dina. That's right, and then I see, um, well, you know. I What's so wrong with Dina that they had to invent an alternate? <laughs> <laughs> I crossed over the, the road and at this point I have the choice of walking around the barrier because my car is right there. Like I'm, there's a corner and, there, and there's a wall. <laughs> And my car is parked right you, at next to the wall. We're talking like a cinder block. Yeah, a concrete uh, wall. Three feet tall. Th three three feet tall. <laughs> three feet tall. And so I'm like, I'm a big man. Three feet is not big for me. You didn't wanna walk next to the guy with the No, ball. no, no, I didn't wanna walk all the way around the wall and then come all the way through the parking lot. It had nothing to do with the guy because at this point I'm getting my car. It doesn't matter if he knows I did the, the Rite Aid winky winky. He doesn't care anymore. Does he? Is he gonna get my license plate and send the cops after me? I don't think so. Might not let you leave. So I wasn't thinking about him at all, I was just thinking about efficiency of getting back into my car and actually getting to a store to get your wife what she wanted. And so I was like, well I'm gonna do that thing where you throw your legs over a fence. It's been years since I've done this though. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. And so I get up there. Like I, a, like a, like a rodeo cowboy. You throw your legs to, to the side. Trying to get on a bull. And I, put my hands on the wall, throw my legs up. Pommel horse. And then as I make eye contact with the ground on the other side, I realize, oh, it's higher on the other side. This is not an even wall. Oh, And snap. so instead of just, and it, 30 feet. I'm not saying it was, you know, it, my side was three feet, the other side was, Four feet. It wasn't. Okay. It wasn't this huge <laughs> drop. But you had to make an adjustment. I had to make. I had to think. Oh. And in the process of thinking, you forgot about that. I trailing leg. I bent my right leg as opposed to keeping it flying over. And in the process, and I had oh. jeans on. I had jeans on. Oh God. Just to give you an idea. Good. My God. shin hits the top of the concrete and just like the corner of the concrete and like rakes my full body weight, <laughs> like rakes on it all the way down my shin or the eight inches or whatever it was that it took. <laughs> and I and I land and I'm like, Ooh. oh no, Ooh. oh no, I may have broken my leg. What? <laughs> the first thing I thought was I may have broken my leg. Cause it was, you know the front of your shin is like really, really sharp? And I thought Yours that, especially. I thought I had like done, I had done something. Thankfully I was able to get into my car cause my car was right there. <laughs> if I had to walk across the parking lot, right. I don't know if I would have made it. Did you think about calling for Bowman? Man? <laughs> no, no. I got into Help my- Help me Bowman. Man. <laughs> I think I might have broken my leg. I get into my trying car. Trying to obfuscate walking past you. I get in my car shut the door and, and I cry. just writhe in oh. the pain. Like I'm like, oh no, oh. Like I was like, and it wouldn't stop hurting and I was like, no, you have not seriously done something serious to yourself. And, I mean it was hurting to like press the gas and the brake. Did you roll up your pant leg and? I couldn't, my pants are too tight. You know what I'm saying and it was like, my jeans are tight so I'm like pulling them up and like they're grabbing onto the flesh that has, been scarred through my jeans. The jeans, jeans are fine. God. Jeans are fine. So anyway, and I'd like to think at that point it's like you, you before you put it in drive, you look up, and he's standing there, <laughs> no. right outside of your door, <laughs> just <laughs> I, watching. I would have no defenses against him. I would have let him arrest me. He's like, dude, twenty dollars, <laughs> citizens arrest. You didn't buy anything at Rite Aid. He would just, he would have escorted me into Rite Aid, and I would have to get some get some that <laughs> thrifty ice cream. I'm going with you to get some chapstick. Um, or you, <laughs> so <laughs> you can't fake an injury. I ended to up get out of this. getting to Whole Foods and getting your wife some things, and she seemed to be very happy. She actually texted me a picture of some of the stuff that she was enjoying. 
Okay. And I was like, great. Pickled it, asparagus. Is it good? I did not taste that. And uh, anyway, so a couple of days after this, I noticed my leg has got this massive, like it scabbed up, like I wasn't seriously hurt, it was just a superficial wound, but I got this like, it looked like the Hawaiian Islands. It was like this <laughs> archipelago, you know what I'm saying, of just scabby tissue. Okay. That eventually, by the time I got to Mexico, it was falling off. And uh, then when I took my picture, it was just sort of a red streak. And uh, it's probably almost gone now. But it's, you know, it's your wife's fault, but I think she was happy. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy that she was happy and it's a small price to pay. Oh man, did I get hurt? You know what? Nope, I didn't. No injuries for the Linkster <laughs> of the holidays. I was coasting, man, coasting. I had a wonderful time. Um, I had a moved to tears multiple times time over the holidays and I'll get into all that. Moved to tears? Yeah. That's quite a teaser. But first, let's get into some ads because let's be real. The name of this podcast is Ear Biscuits. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing a shirt that says Ear Biscuits. I'm drinking from a mug that says, says Ear Biscuits. Not too long ago, I would have thought that this was over branding and pretentious. Um, and then I got a little desperate. And at that point, I just started over over branding myself and I'm okay with it now. And uh, whether you are or not, I'm not really concerned about that. I am I feel good about myself. I feel good about myself in 2019 and I and I really feel great in this shirt that you can get at retinlink.com. What is it? Ret Mythical.store. <laughs> I think if you go to retinlink.com slash store, it'll, it'll still, still go, redirect. But, but it's actually, we're not changing it back in 2019. That was just a little Rite Aid winky winky, not a sponsor. Um, Mythical dot you went store. in and you came out. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I like this mug. It's good. It's got speckle. Get the set of three so you can rep all of our major properties while you're drinking your beverages. And for those of you with three arms, you can drink all at the same time. Um, I, I think there was a, you know, the the question was really how is this going to play out? Us being in Los Angeles for our first Christmases. Um, yeah, we saw each other on Christmas Eve. We got together. We did that Dirty Santa thing, where your mom, well, where you Secret got into, Santa, Dirty Santa, Se different. Yeah, you're right, Secret Santa. It wasn't that special. That that was something that was yep. unexpected to have a bunch of friends over at my house. Yeah, and 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 we did something that has never been done before. That at least wasn't in my even, presence. It wasn't planned. It was weird. You talking about the countdown? The counting down to the to the coming in of Christmas. Yeah, to the turn of Christmas from Christmas Eve to, and it was like New Year's Eve. This, you know, the strike of the new year, but it was Christmas instead. And we had our, our group of friends and all their kids uh, all together, literally chanting, j playing the guitar, chanting. It was, it, they, what is the song that it was? You, I, I missed that. It's a shark, the shark, the shark, the, the, the shark song. Oh, gosh, it was some like I can't remember it right now. I don't know what it is. What, what do you remember What's the tune called? of the countdown that we did? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. I don't know about this. I'm out of the loop, man. I'm out getting gifts for your wife. I don't. What the shark song apparently was something that was big. It's, I don't it's, know. it's a kid's song. Anyway, so uh, we sang that, and I I, had, I went downstairs to the garage, and the floor was buckling under everyone <laughs> jumping up and down. I was like, <laughs> should I stop the celebration? I mean, if they all fall into my garage, is that yeah, still that was, worth it? That was special, man. It was fun. And is it going to be a tradition? That was what I was thinking as it was happening. I need to get two by sixes in the in the floor. Of course, so. you know me. I almost missed it because I was, you know, I was trying to gather up my children and go home like an hour. You before. were trying to get like, out of there. But w I heard all this chanting, and I had gathered up my keys and like I, had, you know, the food that leftovers that nobody ate that we brought, and like I was gathered up and ready to like head out the door, and you know. Get on, get on with the Christmas, getting ready for Christmas morning. I had, cause we had plans. And then we're about to go out the door and I realized, whoa, this chanting thing is like, everybody's all in. Mm. And it's, they're singing 14 minutes. So. At least you knew how long you had. Yes, yeah, so and I'm like, well, if I can stay for 14 minutes. And then lo and behold, like literally every, every millisecond of that was part of a countdown leading up to it. And we stayed for it and that was amazing. Yeah. So that was a great start. Then we go home and, um, uh, you know, I'm gonna leave Santa out of this. All right. 
Understood. None, none, of, none of what I'm talking about has anything to do with what Santa did at my house. This is, I'm only gonna talk about the part that me and Christy did. Got it. All right, so. The Christ, su supplemental stuff. Yeah, so in addition to anything Santa did or might have done or wanted to do or wished he had done, Christy and I had our own plan mm. that the kids didn't know about that we needed to put into action that night. Um, I'm pretty sure this is Christy's idea, but I was, the moment she said it, like we were, we were out on a date, we we're like, we gotta, you know, we were talking about, we gotta, we gotta figure out what we're gonna do. This is our first Christmas here in LA with the kids as opposed to going back home. We gotta start developing some traditions, you know, like I've been talking about. And then she pitched this idea and I immediately knew as she started to pitch it, just jump on board. Don't even analyze it. You know how I have a tendency to like. Oh really? You tweak have, it, analyze it. You have a tendency to analyze it? Yeah, but I can do this and it will be better or what if we did, I was like, I was just, yes man. It was a, and it, it was a brilliant idea. You it should was, do that more often. <laughs> <laughs> just with her. <laughs> the idea was Christmas morning scavenger hunt. Kids are gonna come down. Well, we don't have an upstairs. We do, but it's just me and Christy's upstairs. All the house is downstairs for everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta, is a pecking order here. So they're all downstairs, so they all, you know, they're gonna flow out into, you know, and, and go to the Christmas tree where the, all the presents are, and then they're gonna find out, oh, uh-uh, ain't no presents under the tree. Look, the tree was like full of presents under there. So we moved all of them and hid them all around the house, outside of the house, in the washing machine, in the grill, in the car, and then we had one bear unwrapped with a card on it and it had the first clue. And boy, we were so excited about it. <laughs> you know, and then you'd open that up and it was, it was, a, it was a letter and it was. From, from the bear? No, and it a letter from us, and it was it was um, it even rhymed. It was a poem that I wrote. Yeah, man, and it, at the end it had the first clue to find the presents, and we were so excited. Of course, I ended up staying up till like psh, two a.m. That just something. That's not something that I do. I'm no elf, <laughs> but I did it because we were excited. So then we get down there and we're like. Lando came up to our bedroom first before he went in there and then he got, he woke Lily up I mean, she's 15. So it turns out by the time you turn 15, if you don't have to go to school, you could literally sleep. Into the afternoon. For, 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 you know, for days. Yeah, Like I don't, I, I don't know, if we don't wake her up, I just don't know when she would ever wake up. And um, Lincoln knew that he was getting an electric guitar so he wasn't too motivated to get out of bed either. Right. So we get them out of bed and we're like, okay, go in there and get the presents and then we're like, watch it and they go in there and they're, you know, it's, ah, joke's on you, the presents aren't here and they're like, kind of groggy and they're like, well. And then Lando's the most excited, I mean he's eight and he's like opening the card and they're reading the poem and like, at this point I expect like, celebration. Scavenger hunt! <laughs> I, you, you know, you could have consulted me. <laughs> what seems obvious to me now is that it's like Christmas morning, you run downstairs and all the presents are gone and there's nothing but a letter and we have to answer a riddle. <laughs> so it was, they, were a li they were a little underwhelmed. Yeah. Maybe you should have been a little more, <laughs> you maybe animated. should have analyzed it a little bit Oh, more. I thought you said maybe I needed, should have been a little more animated. No, no, I'm no. like, dude, I was animated. I was like, scavenger hunt, guys. Yeah. So how did, so, so what the, ended up happening? Well, they had to solve the riddles to get their presents. So then, so by the time they found the third present, they were waking up more. It was kinda like, there's like a delayed reaction of, of a scavenger hunt. It's like, it's like in, you, you, you get to your third clue, it's like an infusion of caffeine. Really? So they kinda the, got on board. Well, in my experience, scavenger hunts really hot out of the gate. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? And only go downhill from I there. I think that they saw the look on my face of disappointment <laughs> and like still hope and expectation that this like, let's just do this for dad. 
Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, and, um, is, but, it, is this a tradition? But they no. got into it, and then so, and when they found the presents, they were still wrapped. By the way. Well, yeah. Of so course. and so then they would they would take the presents and they would put them in a pile or like separate them, and then they would. After a while, at what point did it become more of an Easter egg hunt? Do you have to follow the clues? Because you got to follow the clues. But you know, oh, maybe one's in the washing I think, machine. I think there were ten. There were there were ten locations. Okay, total. Yeah, total. They worked as a team to get they everyone's presents. Worked as a presents. team, so each location would have multiple presents, like one for each kid, kind of a thing. And um, so they came around to it, and then I really think it's about now next year. Yes, it is a tradition. We are going to do it, and they're 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 going to be emotionally prepared. But you're going to hire a scavenger hunt company to do it, <laughs> <laughs> right? You're not going to do it yourself. What do you mean? You don't think, you don't think my clues were were lit like a tree, man. Um, so we're gonna do that. So that so then they, so then we were back to square one. They were opening the presents, and then we were proceeding from there. And it was it was good. Well, to and we and we we actually both got um, our kids an electric guitar. Um, you got Lincoln one. I got Lock one. Now I I went with I went with Lock so he could pick it out. Yeah. So oh that's what you, you, Lincoln had already seen his. We guitar. went. We picked out the guitar that he wanted. He wanted um, a, a Telecaster form. Of course, I'm not going to get him an actual Telecaster. I got him like the the preliminary te- version of the Telecaster, yeah. the Squire Telecaster. And we we got the, he's got to prove himself before he moves to the big leagues. Did you did, when you were at the gu- the guitar shop? Did you see the Jaguar, the Fender Jaguar? In the same the, thing. I did, it's like a Squire the cage version. Had an apron over it. What? No. That's what we ended up getting. Be- what? Jaguar, Jaguar. Is it made by Fender? Yeah, it's a. It is a shape that you would recognize. Um, that I think is a little different. Like a Jazzmaster? No, it's just a different. It's just a different shape. Um, it's got a few more bells and whistles. Not that it necessarily does anything. It's all the same price. They're like all in that okay. Squire range. Um, but I knew that you had gotten the Telecaster. I'm thinking about turning my garage into a. Like a garage band, yeah, like site. that. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that's the that's a that's a Jazzmaster uh, body. Okay, same thing then. But it says Jaguar cool co- in it. Cool colors. Uh, we almost got that one, but that one I, was more expensive. The I'm uh, sure people know more than me, and I'm the probably pe- wrong. The pale gr- I, so we got like a candy apple red one, and a, you get, you got him an amp. I'm thinking about turning the garage into a yeah. Got an amp. Which amp did you get? I, uh, Fender. The one that has the built the stuff built into it, like the, the sounds, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I Probably think got the same amp. It was like a hundred bucks. They could okay. I got a better amp. Oh, you did. <laughs> oh, I can't see how it is. <laughs> it wasn't that much more expensive, but it wasn't hundred bucks. Maybe I got the same amp, but I just got a better deal. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, but they, but you're gonna turn. Your did gear, you hide it? Uh, no. Well, there you go. No, <laughs> I, di- I didn't hide it. But well, the the, the most exciting gift uh, that that I got was for Shepard though, because Shepard, as you may recall, on the um, Good Mythical More, we went up, we, well in 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 the episode we went over the filling in the blank on Christmas list, but then in Good Mythical More they went over their list, and I watched that back. We watched that back as a family because I was like, Shepard, have you watched the show that you were on yet? And he was like, No, this is like a week after it had been out. Uh huh. And so we sat down, Jesse and Shepard and I, and watched Shepard on the show. And uh, then we watched Good Mythical More. And that was when I realized that, oh, you know, when he went through his Christmas list, like that was actually a real thing. It wasn't, it, yeah, yeah. It wasn't just for entertainment purposes. That's the way I think about the show. It's like we had these conversations. And sometimes <laughs> right. we're like, oh, there's, the, there's They're no not like real us. world application <laughs> for this. We said we're going to do this, but we're not. Right. You, <laughs> you don't really like wood. Uh, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Um, so I, um, I, I t- oh, hold on. Okay, just tell me, because I remember what he He said, said he wanted a snake. You want a reptile? This or something from the reptile family? How about a snake? Yeah, I want a snake. Okay, your mom will love that. I remember, and you then, get, did you get him a snake? I got him a snake. Well, because Jesse was like, he was like, she, oh, she, he, she saw him mention snake. She's like, oh, you still want a snake? Like, he'd been t- talking to her about how he wants a snake. And so, I don't. I, I don't. Because I kind of thought Shepard was just being Shepard when he said he wanted no, a snake. No, no. I, I, thought, I don't mind snakes, and I thought that this might be an opportunity for him to get a little responsibility or something to have to take care of the snake. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm sure the snake appreciates that. I uh, learn responsibility or kill a snake. Well, you know, I mean, you 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 got, you got to weigh you got to weigh the the pros and cons here. I'm not gonna, a mammal. I'm going to step in and take care of this cold-blooded animal as needed. You got a snake. Yeah. So we got a. Uh, so first of all, how you wrap a snake? Uh, well, the first snake <laughs> we did wrap. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> uh, no. So you don't wrap a snake. But what I did do is I went to um, uh, the the pet store here in in Burbank that we that we got Craig from actually the one that really they try to take Craig back to because this place has a bunch of reptiles. Great pet store. Uh, scales and tails. I'll sh- I'll sh- I'll shout them out. Uh, not a sponsor. Not a, sp- a sponsor, but of anything. Probably it's basically the place in Burbank to get uh, pets, or but definitely get reptiles, and um, and we sort of exotic pets and that kind of thing. So I go in there and I have my mindset on a corn snake. In the little bit of reading I have done, that you know, corn snakes are easy, great for your first snake, and you can get like these weird colors and stuff. We got the, I think they call it the Okeechobee uh, uh, mutation, which is makes they're like. Orange and orange and red. Okay, that's a mutation, not normal. You say f- when you get your first snake, as if you plan on getting more snakes. No, I mean this is the first and probably the last snake. But I'm saying I didn't want to get something that you have to like think about a whole lot. It's not I that big around. It's like as big around as my thumb, right? Yeah, but it, they can go to six feet long. Really? But more likely four feet long is what this thing. They're would. fast too, aren't they? Yeah, it's and it's a lively snake. They can snake. get away like in the you, house. They, they they like to be handled and and, and that kind of thing. They, it, or get away. Well, yeah, I mean they could get away, but we know the protocol. But I had to come here. I actually had to come here to like put because they just give you the snake in a little plastic, um, like something you'd get you'd get takeout at a restaurant with. That's what they put the snake in. I was like, I'm not interested in eating the snake. <laughs> He's like, No, this is how we. This is how we transport the snakes. A little paper towel and some holes in this little plastic. Like thing. a wonton. Yeah. And mm, then they out. give you the whole setup and you got like you got the th- you know your heat lamp and there's like a pad underneath it. You got to have a hot side and a cold side. There's water, you know, all that. I came here to do all this on like, you know, Christmas Eve. Oh, no, gosh. no, 2 days before Christmas. And um so the snake who Shepherd ended up naming Moose, by the way. <laughs> Moose the snake. That's cool. Uh, was in our office, sealed up. You know he couldn't get out of the terrarium. Um, but the, the, I'm just going to talk to you about the the disturbing side of reptile ownership uh, because this is something that I not anticipated, but I kind of understood. I mean, I know. I, I think I I think I understand. It's called just having a snake. That's disturbing <laughs> enough. No, no, no. It gets dark. It's going to get dark. Er. So. Um, Again, I don't mind this the, the snake. I, I he seems kind of almost kind of cute. We, first of all, you, we don't know if it's a male or a female. Apparently, finding out the the sex of the snake involves a probe of some kind, and you got to kind of be like an expert. Like it's not just like you just turn it over and look at it. And so, like even the guy was like, I don't know if it's a male or a female, and I'm not. And the implication was, and I'm not about to find out for you. So we just went with moose. It could be a male or a female. All right? There we don't are plan on breeding it. There are. Male and female meese. And uh, so, um, but I'm like, so what do I feed it? So, oh, you you, you feed it pinkies. Pinkies. Well, I was a finger. There's four you, you of us, like the small, two hands. The, the smallest finger on eight, each of my hands. Eight McLaughlin pinkies. That's not gonna last long. He's like, these baby mice. Like that's, that's there's no alternatives? Like baby hairless mice. So the dude proceeds to, and listen, if you are like super animal lover, you may wanna skip this part. (laughs) Um, Because basically they have mice, live mice in the pet store at different stages. And he's like, he reaches in, he reaches in, he's like, this is what you're gonna start feeding him. And he just pulls out this little teeny baby mouse that has no hair on it. It looks like just something that just popped out of. Oh gosh! Like a little, a little preemie looking thing. Oh gosh! Like can't even see, and he's like, "Yeah, you're gonna just take it. You're gonna put it in the bag with the snake." Now he, then he says, "But you can get frozen." I was like, "Yes, I want frozen." So I first of all, I didn't. I wasn't gonna deal with the live situation, which technically a lot of people, including this guy, said that, you know, if you want to be safe, 
you give them frozen from, from the beginning and frozen from then on out so that they can't get injured because you know, a, a mouse will bite a snake as it's going down, you know, and it can okay. injure the snake. Okay, okay, okay. But these people, just so you understand. I wasn't in the market for a snake. Why are you trying no, no, to talk no, me no, out of it? Because I just want you to understand the reality. People Why? who have, and, and I don't know why I've never thought about this, but people who have snakes, he's like, as it gets older, you're gonna wanna continue to go up. He's like, there's pinkies, and then there's, he called them like softies or something, or fluffies, and then he's gonna small mice, and then large mice. Uh, okay, and Craig also eats frozen mice as well. Uh, so we're doing all frozen here. But these are just mice that are just bred in order to be given to reptiles. <clears throat> and, um, this was our happy holiday episode. No, no, get but, this over with. But the interesting thing is, is that on the like, um, you know, animal ethics scale, you've got these more developed mammals. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I said earlier, it's not a mammal. More closely related to us, they ha they actually have a you know an, a, another part of their brain that like gives them the opportunity to process thoughts on a different level and to like enjoy bonding and this stuff and we're feeding it to the lower life form, the snake, because this is the way that the world works. There are no vegan snakes. And so then I was like, does this mean that there are no vegan snake owners? Or if a vegan snake owner has a snake, they're just like, well I'm not eating the mice, he's eating the mice. I don't understand the ethics of it. Let I, the snake snake. I'm not a vegan, I understand that we're all part of the food chain, I understand that this is what snake ownership involves, and I'm, but I'm not gonna deal with the live ones, I'm gonna deal with the frozen ones and I really don't wanna know what happens before that. You gotta microwave them before you throw them in the cage? You can, but you shouldn't. You just set it out and let it thaw. If you microwave it, you can, it's uneven and it can get hot in certain places, it can injure your snake. Okay. So what I do is I take the snake, I put it into, this is what this guy says, you put it into a little brown bag with the thawed mice, mouse, once a week, you, you 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 basically fold it close, put it back in his cage so he eats in a different environment so that he does not get the idea that I eat in this terrarium because then you might stick your hand in there, he thinks it's a snake, thinks it's a mouse and eats it. So a pinky, he thinks you're pinky's pinky. Eventually, as the snake gets bigger, you're gonna have to like have a feeding, like if you got a huge snake, like a 20 foot snake, you gotta have like a feeding bin, you know? And then in that point, you're like giving it a rat to eat. The guy, I saw somebody, I was in line. A woman comes in, she's like, I want one of the large rats. The guy reaches in the fridge, pulls it out, holding it, just a dead rat. And that's like a couple of times a year for that, for that big snake though, I think. No, maybe every 10 to 14 days. Oh. I don't know, but it's, but Man, moose is once a week. My Christmas is over and you ruined it. <laughs> It's just the reality, man. It's the circle of life. <clears throat> Where's Elton John when you need him? So after everybody got their presents open, um, everybody's playing their new guitars and Lando's loading up his uh, gumball machine. He asked for a gumball machine. Your next on the list is another machine. This is a, a gumball machine. Small one. Okay, good, small one. We got that. Oh, really? No mice in there. But you could probably put the little pinky mice in the little balls. That would we, be kind of cool. We did. We not, could put that in Shepherd's room, and that's where he gets the mice. That's where the corn snake crawls up inside. <laughs> put the corn snake in the in the gumball machine. That'd be cool. That could that's be a weird. cool terrarium. Yeah. Um, we did not get Lando a claw machine like he asked for because yeah. of the reasons that I told him. Yeah, that'd be overkill. Um, and then, you know, in the in the effort to further traditions, we're like, Lily's gonna make a meal, she made this beef stroganoff meal for our dinner and we're all sitting down at the table, like gathered around eating our meal. This is this is the evening, Christmas evening by this point. And we're sitting down and we're eating this meal that my daughter prepared, it's fabulous, everybody's happy, has got their stuff and um, I just find myself weeping <laughs> at the table. Like I was I literally found myself weeping tears of joy. You know, the at my table. The here's the thing though is that you know 20 years from now you're going to start the, the the estrogen is really going to be getting produced. Yeah. At that point you will many men find themselves weeping for for no reason Nothing at all. Nothing but weep. You're going to start it at 40. 
Yeah. You just need to, you gotta pace yourself a little bit. It kinda caught the fam off guard a little <laughs> bit and um, I think Chrissy knew what was happening and maybe she maybe she teared up a little bit, maybe she gave me a pat on the shoulder. Yep. And um, But th the realization I was having was just tremendous gratitude for this this family. I mean, you got these people who are, they're their own people but like we, you know, they, we made them in, in a certain sense and. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think specifically it was, the, it was the first time in a long time that we had our own Christmas thing. And it was that we had our own thing for the first time that was distinct from the rest of our family. Um, I mean, and we missed them. We missed our family not being there, but, and I was a little, sad about that and we did talk to them and do video chats throughout the day and stuff like that. But I realized that I actually felt very much the, f the very fatherly for the first time and I started thinking I'm about feeling fatherly. traditions be because when the rest of your family is there, when your parents or maybe older siblings or other extended family is there, relationships go up and they go down in time. But when it was just us, I was the, you know, I was the I was the only father around. So it was a very different feeling that kind of snuck up on me that's like we have a thing. And I think that it was something that my family like my that that encouraged us to do our own thing. I think they knew better than I did that it's like yes, you need you need to have this sensation. And I realized that I just had not had it. And that, and, that, and I, when I realized that I was having it, I started to cry. And it was very, I was very happy. Does this mean that you ha you're gonna, like this is Christmas now? Like you're not gonna be home again? I don't, uh, yeah I don't know. I mean we, if, if, as long as Locke keeps playing basketball, we have to be here. So I'm, I don't have a choice for four years, but. It, it was, I mean at this point, uh, we haven't talked about that specifically, so I, I don't know exactly. Well, it sounds but I like say, it was pretty moving. It was very moving. So, so yeah, that is that is a big tick in the yes column of let's do this again. Let's continue to build on this. Well, I will say I I teared up um, at the Christmas meal, but it was because um, I nearly burned the house down, <laughs> and it was just the smoke coming from the oven. What? Uh, yeah. Um, and but it was beef. I'm sure this was my wife's fault, so but it, go for but it. But it wasn't Beef Stroganoff, it was Beef Wellington. Oh, that's not easy. Well, so Je Jesse's parents had been in town. They left, we had a couple of days, we, did, we kinda did some just the us McLaughlin's thing. And then uh, Jesse's sister and her uh, her family, so husband and two boys, about you know high school age boys, so a little older than Locke, we're gonna come stay, but they, they flew in on Christmas Day. And so we're like, okay, well we're gonna prepare Christmas dinner and so we can all have it together when they get there. Uh huh. And Jesse and I, you know, we, we fancy ourselves as, you know, culinarily uh, skilled, although we're not, but we're adventurous. And um, we were like, well, she's like, well, I'm gonna do these Cornish hens because we do Cornish hens every year as like our, our Christmas dinner before we go back home. Mm -hmm. But now we're gonna make it the Christmas dinner. But I was like, but what if we tried Beef Wellington? You know, ever since I watched that first season of Hell's Kitchen and heard Gordon Ramsay talk about it, I had this idea of how awesome it would be to make Beef Wellington. So we made all of them at the same time. And- um, It's ambitious. I do, we, we ended up like, we couldn't put the all of it in the oven at the same time, and so we ended up putting the hens directly on the grate in the oven, and then I put these drip pans underneath it, and then everything was dripping off of the Cornish hens, and it was smoking up the house, and the fire alarm kept going off, Ooh. and then I had, and it was freezing, as you know, for LA, it was freezing on Christmas Day for what you know it was in, this, in the forties. Can you believe it? Which is super cold to us at this point because mm -hmm. you know we've adjusted. So I got all the my, the windows and doors open. I did did tear up a little bit, but again, it was because of the smoke in the ice. There were no flames, though. No, no flames. And actually, the was meal, there yelling? The meal, Jesse and I, um, yeah, a little bit. Christmas Day yelling. I mean, there's, it's hey, not, that's part of it, it's man. It's not Christmas if you're not yelling at each yeah, other. Yeah, 
It's part of and, it. And um, the meal was really good. It ended up being great. And nothing was burned. It was oh. just the drippings had created the smoke situation. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna make that the smoking up the house a tradition, but it is the kind of thing that becomes a tradition. You know, like you tell the story of the time the whole house got smoked up, and then like uh, 400 years later, like there's like a dude with incense, and he's like, "We light this incense in honor of the time Red and Jesse McLaughlin nearly burned their house down." Like that's how tradition starts. It's always well, something that's, stupid. That sounds more like a religion. <laughs> oh, oh, did I tell you I'm starting a religion? <laughs> yeah, that's different. <laughs> that's 2019, the year I started religion. And then, so then, I embarked on my trip. To well, I don't want to get it was t- just really quickly okay. because I I had everybody I had every I had family there for those two different periods of time and I, I learned something about my dog uh, I'll, I'll show a picture at the appropriate time here on the feed but um, my dog is unfaithful Barbara is unfaithful uh, oh well I knew that. You know that Barbara likes to, seeks attention from whoever is there, but when Jesse's parents were there, she slept in the bed with Jesse's parents. And of course, Jesse's whole family, they're all dog people, they don't care, they love her, they think she's incredible. Yeah. So they're not, it's not like, if, if Barbara tried to sleep with my parents, it would be a little different. But, um, so Barbara is like, sleeping with the enemy, not the enemy, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, oh, you said it, you said it. and. Sleeping with uh, Jesse's parents, and then sleeping with uh, Jesse's sister uh-huh. and her husband, and even going to the point of getting in their their suitcase. I have a picture. I'll show it now. This is Barbara. In for those of you who are watching the podcast, like, like trying to. I don't know if she's trying to send the message. I want to go home with you. I hate it here because she seems to love us as well. Because what she'll do is she'll spend all night down there, and then in the morning she'll come and get and start scratching at our door, and then wants to come in and just make out with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not making out with you right now. You've been <laughs> you've been making out with with, with other people downstairs. <laughs> it's not time for that. But you did let her in. Yeah, I do. I can't help it. She so, also wore a sweater pretty much the entire holiday season. Oh, festive. Yeah, it was just, I don't know, one day she just had a sweater What on. does she think about the snake? Does not care about moose at all. Well, doesn't bark at him, doesn't look at him, doesn't sniff him. Shepard brought him down Christmas day, holding him. Barbara doesn't care. We were wondering if she was gonna freak out and like try well, to did attack Barbara it. see the snake? Uh, yeah, she seemed to, but she didn't seem to care about it. Maybe she was, maybe she was friends with a snake in a previous life. I don't know. Now, if she if she gets in the aquarium with a snake, I know that's what not what it's called, but whatever. Then Ter- terrarium. You're really being cheated on. Like you should really take that personally. If she's curled up with the snake. She might try. So after Christmas, um, we went we went to Sedona, Arizona, because, again, like I said last year, biscuit. We decided not to do the RV thing. We want to get there quick. We the place that I found it had a great view out the window of the red rocks that are signature for Sedona. Uh, Unfortunately, we couldn't take Jade because they wouldn't allow her in this place and um, that was my one regret, that Jade was not with us. But um, this place, I mean, a lot of friends had told us about it and they talked it up and that's why I wanted to go and I knew there was a lot of good day hiking and I'm still trying to foster the love for the nature with my family and taking nature walks. I don't call them hikes because it's like we've talked about before. My kids have decided they don't they don't think they like to hike. So you just call it something else. Hmm. And, and it works? Or just don't tell them you're doing it. Just tell them, oh, we're walking to the car but we're gonna take an alternate route. And then lo and behold, we're out here in nature for three hours and they're loving it. That, so that was my vision. You can do a scavenger hunt out there as well, just so you know. I mean. They th- tend to be pretty fun outdoors. This is a, uh, you could do a spiritual scavenger hunt because this place is like, I mean, call it new agey, okay? Um, in the 70s, there was some psychic woman who went there and said, oh, this is a, this is a, this is a hotbed of spiritual earth energy activity. And there are, because you go in and there's, it's a two lane road that kind of goes through um, into kind of a valley that then 
you're driving past these red rock formations on either side of the road and it's absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. It's like. Is this where um, red, red Rocks the theater is? No, no. Where, where John Tesh played? No, but it is, it's the same, it is the same type of rocks, I do okay. believe. Um, you know, the iron content, you got like a rust situation going on. And uh, the erosion exposes these amazing looking formations. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one there's one natural bridge called Devil's Bridge that you can hike to. I ended up not going for weather reasons. Um, so I'll have to go back, but I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. So in the 70s, it was determined to be this like place where there was a lot of spiritual energy going in and coming out of the earth in places called vortexes. Vortexes. Which we learned about vortexes back when we went to Tonopah, Nevada as part of Commercial Kings where we made a tourism ad for them for that episode. And I'm still reasonably proud of that episode. And I saw the sign for Tonopah when we were driving. When and we Tonopah were, has a vortex. That's what they say, right? Yeah. Um, we ended up, you know, so there's a lot of, it's very hippie, spiritual, um, so you got the beautiful scenery, lots of people hiking, lots of shops with lots of crystals, crystals where each crystal does something special. Other than just sit there and be a rock. Right. Right. And there's four vortexes. Um, there's four. So yeah. Sedona's got four. It's got four. And um, how many how, how many cheesecake factories does it have? Zero. Wow. So weigh that. Okay, all right. When you're, yeah, just and um, your we signed up for a Jeep tour for one day, but as I was looking for that, there was also a Vortex tour that I thought about taking where um, the description was a, written by the one tour guide who said, if you have a party of four or less, you meet me at this gas station and you can get in my car and I will drive you to the Vortexes you can experience a male vortex, a female vortex, and general spiritual goodness. If you have a party of five or more, I'll get in the car with you and we'll do the same. So uh, at that point I just, I didn't I didn't pursue that one any further. How big, I don't know, how, how, how big around is a vortex? Well. I'm thinking about how big the party is I'm gonna take. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do we all get in one at a time or do we all, does the whole group get in? And can you feel it? It's not a hole. No, it's like a tornado. It's like a spiritual tornado. It's pretty big. One, it, the, like for one, there's a rock called Bell Rock, which is pretty freaking big, but you can, if if you were physically capable, you could hike up to the top of the bell in, in an hour, okay? So that gives you an idea how big it is. It's shaped kind of like a bell. Um, we hiked this. It is a vortex, the entire formation. Is a vortex. Is a vortex. Okay. That's all I can say about it. You didn't Having, feel it? Did you feel it? I I felt joy being there. I felt exhilaration and a little fear climbing up because Lando kept wanting to climb up and I kept saying, climbing up's easy, buddy. It's the climbing down that's difficult. But in a vortex, you don't have to worry about gravity. That's what he said. Oh. And I was like, nope. I'm not buying it. So every every so often I would make him w crawl ahead and then prove to me that he could crawl back down and the rest of the family had long since bailed on the, on this entire. They didn't go up this, into the vortex? We went ha they went halfway up the bell and then we went we we went another third of the way up. Beautiful place. Just can't I I have nothing more to say about a vortex. I don't know. I just didn't experience anything. I should have signed up for the tour. You weren't open. I should have got you were closed. Should, we should have got the woman in our car. You have to open your heart in the same way that the vortex is open and you, you understand it. I We did have a couple of magical experiences. The first one, we get there that night, we're eating pizza and the employees at the place say, oh look, it's it's um, it's, there's a snow flurry. It's the first of the season. Was it going in a no, vortex pattern? it was not. That would have been that would have been important for me. They went outside and it was like, wow, they don't, they actually don't get a lot of snow there. And because I was reading online, it's like if you're hiking, you might be lucky and there might be a dusting of snow on the red rocks, which can be beautiful. Turns out Lando had never seen, he didn't realize this, he had never seen falling, natural falling snow. Hmm. You know, because we've been out here since he was, before he was two years old and um, 
We just haven't, he hasn't seen snowfall, except yeah. for Man Made at a Ski Resort last, last year this time. Right. That was special, but then the next day I take him out hiking or on a nature walk, wink, wink, and it starts snowing, and we went on a hike, dude, in the snow, and it was absolutely, it was awesome. I, I mean, it was I, like. This is where I saw some of the Instagrams from your family, right? Yeah, it's like nothing, I mean, it's like, you could go your whole life and not hike in, in, in snow falling on the Red Rocks, especially in Sedona, from what I've heard. Um, it was pretty special, like, we had a blast. Did you cry then? I had a little tear tear action. And there was no happening. beef stroganoff involved? No, not you, at because, all. Because yeah. you, you need to isolate Didn't what, what the yeah, trigger is. Trying to correlate what it is. If it's not beef stroganoff, maybe it's just being with your family and having and you know having good times. Well, how sad is that? <laughs> it's gotta be something else. <laughs> um, two day, the next day we took a, a Jeep tour which turned out to be actually kinda lame but you can rent Jeeps there and do uh, ex like Extreme aggressive off-roading off which a lot of places you can't do that. So that's another cool thing about that if you wanna go to Sedona, not a sponsor. Sedona, not a sponsor. <laughs> Entire town, not a sponsor. The next to last day we're there, it starts snowing. We go out for brunch and this is an unexpected snow by the, and it's dumping snow. By the time we come out an hour and a half later, we had driven four minutes to eat brunch. We come out, we get back in the car, it's like seven inches of snow. It's crazy. It was amazing. It took us over two hours to drive the four minute drive back to our uh, condo because the place just wasn't ready for it and it shut down. And we drove for an hour, we didn't move hardly any and I was like, all right guys, get out and just walk home. And they had they had a blast just kind of walking home in the in the snow blast and I had some alone time with my vortex. <laughs> That sounded weird. I was just in the car listening to. Yeah, I understood. I was, but I listened to like vortex music, spa music. Yeah, right. It was. Yeah. It was really. Yeah, you got to. You got to get everything in line. It was really, and then so we get back home, have some coffee. I finally get there, and the the sun's going down. I'm like, we can hike back up this trail from our condo, and Lando and I went out there, and that's the picture that I showed in LTAT that I got him to take of me, and I get up there to the top, and dude. I swear, this is when I cried again. I was like, Lando, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It was, there was snow on this trail and a view of the Red Rocks and like it was as quiet as, as Christmas Eve before Santa. And I called Christy, I was like, you bailed on this but you have to get dressed and you have to hike up here and see this. And she came up there and she was like tearing up. It was so beautiful up there. It's so quiet and she was like, this is like Narnia. I thought about you and your obsession with Narnia. Did, Dude, I, did went you find to, a lamp post? I went to winter Narnia, no lamp post. Uh, it wasn't Narnia. Took lots of photos in my like. Did you find any uh, goat tracks? No. no. Okay, it wasn't actually Narnia, okay. I get it. But just one set, it was just, special, a set of two, just a set of two, cause that was his, cause he had his half goat. I mean, the entire the entire thing. I, I I was just, you know, I was just struck with. For for my family, I tr I try to adopt this mentality, but then I'm trying to apply it to life in a New Year's resolution type way. It's just trying to, set, and maybe we've talked about this, but to set up, you can't you can't create moments like that or all the moments that we had, the tear up moments. But you can create you can you can set the table for something memorable to happen for the place to get filled up with smoke, so to speak. You know, and it's just, there's an art to saying, okay, I can't force this, but I can set the table for something amazing. We can go here, we can go to this place and do a walk and maybe the snow will dump. Maybe something magical will happen. We do, and we're just gonna Probably be here and be open. It would have been a totally to different trip if, if it hadn't snowed. And I, you know, I can't say it's not related to the vortex. But the vortex isn't at your house. Why not? Maybe you have a vortex in your house. Maybe I do. Maybe vortexes make you cry. Maybe maybe they do. I had a slightly different, <laughs> a slightly different experience. No snow in Mexico. Well, uh, Cabalicious. I enjoyed being with the family that we had in town. Uh huh. 
But I have a certain capacity for just people in my house. I, regardless of how well we're getting along and the fun that we're having. We, we, I we, get it. We, we had a great time. As families, we watched a lot of movies. I saw Bird Box, suddenly all the memes made sense. Um, I saw Aquaman, I watched my wife watch Jason Momoa. Oh. Um, and that was interesting, but then I got to take in Amber Heard in sort of a similar way, which I've, I, I had license to do that. Oh. Uh, in her in her aqua suit or whatever it was, I heard that. And uh, and then um, so we so we saw movies and but th by the end of it, I was kind of like, I am I, I kind of need and I knew this and this is why I planned this trip to Cabo with just Jesse. I was like, I'm gonna need some time to myself and just me and my wife after having everybody in town. So we went down to uh, Cabo just for like four days and uh, had a very relaxing time. I actually ended up working, but I don't call it work, because you know, like writing songs and working on some other things that we can't talk about. Um, but stuff that was, stuff that you could do next to a pool in sort of a relaxing fashion. Um, and I got the, uh, and did the photo shoot, which, which you know, I'm very proud of. <laughs> Well, you gotta fill you gotta fill the listeners in because they don't know what the photo shoot is. Did well, you? I don't think you said that at well, the top. No, y yeah. So when we got to this place, they were orient orient orienting us to what was you know the options and the place, and they were like, "Oh, there's a complimentary photo shoot." You know, I knew that by complimentary photo shoot they meant somebody's going to take photos of you and then charge you a lot of money for the photos that they took. It's not really complimentary. So but, the shoot is free, but the photos are expensive. But Jesse had gotten me this watermelon bathing suit and matching watermelon shirt, almost as a joke, not ever thinking I would wear them together. I've worn them both independently. I think I wore the watermelon shirt on the show at one point. But I put the whole package together. Uh, if, you, if there's any place to do it, it's Cabo. And um, I was like, this is what I'm wearing for the photo shoot, what are you wearing? <laughs> so J Jesse and I took some photos together, but then I was like, I, obviously I gotta get something by myself. I mean, this is kind of a special outfit. Okay, now what, tell me why that was obvious. Um, just because, I mean, <laughs> you, saw, you, you saw the photo. <laughs> I think I created a vortex in Cabo. Oh gosh, give I mean, me a break. I don't know how the vortex has happened, but if there was not a vortex around me while I had that watermelon suit on on the beach, then I don't believe in vortexes. Oh gosh. Um, and here, the interesting thing was is, you know me, of the two of us, um, I'm the one that is a little more uh, worried about what people think. Mm -hmm. And, um, and also, I'm always, I'm very uh, overly, irrationally sensitive to how big I am. I'm just a very large person, so I kind of feel like if I do anything, if I get out there and dance, it, whatever I do, you're gonna see me do it because I, you can't miss me, right? Right. And so I have and this. And you're not even factoring in being covered in watermelons. Right, and so I'm like, I gotta put this watermelon thing on. I'm gonna walk all around this resort. You're getting cold feet on us. No, I knew I was gonna do it, but I couldn't just relax into it. I wanted to just relax into my, identif my identity as the guy who wears the watermelon outfit. I just wanted to be that guy. But in, in, as I'm getting that picture taken, all the people who are eating breakfast at the restaurant that overlooks the beach are just like looking at me like, look at this douche. You know what I'm saying? This guy I obviously thinks that this is cool and I wanna be able to be like, I know that this is funny. I don't know why, and I told Jesse, I was like, that's yeah. my New Year's resolution, right. is just to just quit caring. Quit caring about what people think. Create your own vortex. Be your own vortex. That's what my t-shirt says. But Photoshop the leg wound after. I will add that. No, but you know what? That's all airbrush. Part, it. It's all part of the story, though. It's all part of the story, and, and, and um, you know, that's that's the uh, and by the time this is out, that picture will be on my Instagram as well. I mean, shout out to Red MC on Instagram. I haven't done that in a while, but you know what? There's a vortex happening over there on Instagram right now, and you could be a part of it. Maybe if you double click that picture, you'll create your own vortex right there with your thumb. I don't know how the internet works, but if you want to get into my vortex, create your own vortex. We'll have a just a web of vortexes. Maybe the whole world will become a vortex, and it starts with going over to Red MC and liking that photo. Sorry, 
Um, <laughs> um, so I, I, that was kind of, I mean, it's kind of selfish. I realized that. I mean, I, you know, especially contrasted with, with how you wept, <laughs> you wept in the presence of your family. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I think my holidays really just comes down to that single photo of me and the watermelons. <laughs> okay. Yep. Oh gosh. No, I had an incredible time with my wife. It was we needed the time, even though it was just a few days. Uh, I got offered coke on the streets of Cabo, uh, you know, by at least seven people. Like diet coke? Or? It was the diet coke and that cherry coke, and uh, just Coke Classic, Coke Zero. They had every kind of coke that you could imagine. How was it? I didn't. I didn't trust it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, I just, I just didn't trust it, and so I didn't say yes to that. Okay. For the record, <laughs> you said no. I said no. To the coke. I am not interested in that. <laughs> uh, but one of the more notable things uh, I'll never forget, and uh, it's one of those things that there's these things that happen to you, and then they become part of your your personal canon whenever you interact with an object, and let me explain. We have some of these things between the two of us. <laughs> I'm at the pool, and I order a quesadilla. You know, it's like poolside restaurant, they'll bring you whatever you want. Yeah. Great service, whatever. Love it. And, uh, they bring me a quesadilla and the guy comes and sets it down and it's, you know, it's the sort of the half moon. It's the, it's the folded over tortilla as a quesadilla is pretty recognizable food product. Okay. And an yep. old <laughs> old man walks by, comes up and he's like, "What do you call that?" <laughs> <laughs> really? And yes, he's like, "What do you call that?" And I was like, "A quesadilla." <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, and, and instead of saying like, "Oh, I didn't, I didn't know it's case of Tia," like yeah. he was like, he was like, "Huh?" And then he goes over and starts talking to his wife and like, "They discovered honey." I introduced someone to a case of Tia. You'll never believe this thing. And so then, you and you'll never, <laughs> you'll never believe how they spell it. And so so again, now this is what I'm getting at this whole personal canon thing, which is one of the things I love about life. So then, when we when when Jesse and I are at the uh, airport getting ready to uh, mm -hmm. uh, leave Cabo, and because we have a certain credit card, we get into this lounge area. Right? Oh, I so, know what they had, and uh, they had a quesadilla, and I bring it back and put it. I got it on my plate, and I I'm like, "What do you call this?" <laughs> yeah, you, know, you had a little laugh. Yeah, had a little had laugh. A little shared. And so now for the rest of my life, anytime I'm with my wife and we order a quesadilla, okay. one of us is going to say. What do you call that? That's couple cannon. Yeah, couple cannon, man. We you got a couple cannon quesadilla. Yeah, that that that's it. That's create the, your own vortex. That's the thing about you know um, relationships. Hey, we you know we're 18, 19 years into marriage. Add a couple of years when dating. It's like you got to you got to keep adding to the couple cannon. Yeah, you got to. You know, and so and quesadillas are so prevalent. That's good. <laughs> That's a good reminder well, of that not where, not where not that where man's that, from. Don't go except where that guy's from. Now, not a sponsor. One of the last things that I'd like to do uh, is this was the present that my wife got for me, which is uh, she thought I would like a 360 camera. She was right. Um, oh. Jacob, Kiko, I warned Kiko about this. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna take, I'm, I'm uh, taking Jacob a picture. Jacob wore his pants with his <laughs> knees out. <laughs> like, oh, my knees are out. <laughs> I hope this is gonna work. I'm gonna take a 360 degree photo of our studio right now. And then I'm going to, I don't, where can you post 360 degree photos? Just take it. I'm, I'm gonna tweet out wherever Do you Do you have to rotate to it? No, you can take it one, two, three. That was, that was it, it, huh? It's like, it's like Men in Black. I think you can chop them up and put them on Instagram. Oh, really? Chop them up on Instagram. Well, you can better you better believe it. If it can be on Instagram, it will be. Shout out to Red MC. If not, I'm going to tweet it out. All right. Well, man. So we've caught up. Here yeah. we are. Holidays caught up. We got 2019 is just bustling out before us, and let's let's walk that red carpet, shall we? Together. Every week, we're going to bring you another ear biscuit. Let's go through 2019 together. Bring your friends along. Um, go to iTunes or wherever you're listening. Could be Spotify, I don't know, wherever else. Leave a review. 
that all that stuff helps, but bring bring in people into this world of friendship and honesty, laughs, tears. The friendship vortex. All of it. That might be the, that might be the subtitle for 2019 of this Ear Biscuits. Do it. Thank you for hanging out with us. I mean, shoot, Conan's got a podcast now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, this competition is getting stiff. Right. I don't know what's going to happen. You probably shouldn't have even mentioned his. Yeah. Take it back. We take it back. He doesn't have a podcast. Don't no, go, he don't go, don't go looking for it. We'll talk with you next week. Only us, or at least us first. I don't know. One of the other things I did, I I didn't get to. I'll just tell you, so be quick, but um, we were eating dinner in Sedona and um, in, in the place and like I was playing music, I was playing like Lord Huron and I was like, when, I was just thinking a lot about the kids when, when they get older and I was thinking like, you know, um, 20, 20 years from now, I'm 60, like I would love to know that I could like rent a place and have the family come back and I was like, I was saying this, I was like Lily, you're gonna, 20 years from now, you're gonna be, you're gonna be 35 years old. You might have, you know, might have a partner and have kids and Lincoln, who knows what you'll be doing, Lando, I don't know, you know, be 28. You guys could all have lives, you'll have lives of your own. And what if I bring you back and we're all hanging out like after Christmas in some vortex and do would you, what if, you had this idea that like you were gonna go over to whatever, the way music was played, and you go over and you would play something. Like would you even know as, a, as like a, a sweet moment, would you even know the music that your dad always played in the house when you were growing up? Like would you even know what that is? Like when I was a kid, I know my mom played Al Green and Lionel Richie, so important to me now, and Michael Jackson, like I know that she, that's the stuff that was played. Would you know that? D like, do you know who this is that's playing right now? And they were like, ah, uh, Fleet Foxes? <laughs> and I was like, that's wrong, but that's good, and that would've worked, it's Lord Huron. So 20 years from now, when we're all together, I don't want you to say a word, I want you to go over. Li I was talking to Lily. She's the most reliable one, I felt like, it, with this kind of promise. I, I want you to, in whatever way music is played, when we're all together 20 years from now, you got lives of your own, but we're all back together. I want you to play some Lord, Lord Huron, and then I'm gonna start hearing it, and I'm gonna remember this moment, and I want you to promise that you're gonna remember this, and it's gonna be called the Lord Huron Promise. We'll shorten it to just the Huron Promise, because the Lord Promise sounds like something's probably already taken. And she was like, okay, dad, you're being weird. <laughs> really? <laughs> but I made a promise. So 20 years from now, 2038, I'm gonna be with my family and all of a sudden, this a song's gonna play and my daughter will have remembered the promise. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.